Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a question that involves some calculus and integration and just our understanding of functions, exponential functions in particular. So this is a non-calculator question. I'll post the question. Try it first and then see if you can do it. The question we're posing here is we want to know the area bounded by these two functions in the first quadrant, the upper right quadrant, and the axes, okay? So the first thing I'm noticing is I'm going to try to discern what my upper and my lower functions are, as well as I have this absolute value issue here that I have to resolve. So I think I'm gonna do the absolute value first. So f of x, is going to be equal to, well, I can break this into piecewise. So this is going to be e to the x minus 1 minus e to the negative. I'm going to drop the absolute value brackets and write regular brackets. And that's true for x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Okay, And it's also e to the x minus 1 minus e to the x minus 1. So here I'm taking the negative case where x minus 1 is less than 0. So this implies that x is greater than or equal to 1 and this one where x is less than 1. So this 1 becomes important because clearly if you notice when um, we take the negative case, look that's e to the x minus 1 minus e to the x minus 1. Well that's equal to 0. So you can see here that when f is 1, the value of the function is 0. And that's true for any values less than 1, meaning that up to the point where x is 1, f is flat. OK, it's a flat function. Now beyond that, it's going to be an increasing function, OK? Because you can see f is an increasing function after 1. These are growth functions, and um, so we're going to be increasing. Now, I'm curious to know what g of x is at 1. So g at 1, when I plug 1 into there, well, that's going to give me e to the 0 plus e to the 0, which is 2. So g at 1 is 1. So what that means is g is up here. It's the upper function at 1. So there's my y and there's my x. So it looks as though g is my upper function, upper, and f is my lower function. And that's important when I construct my integral. OK, well, now let's think about that. Notice that g is up here. So if f is looking something like that, uh, g is, prob is, is a growth function as well. So at some point after 1, both are increasing functions. They're going to uh, meet somewhere. There's going to be a point of intersection. So what I'd like to know is where do these functions intersect um, past 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for the point of intersection. So I'm going to choose uh, th this upper function here, this version of f, past 1, because this is where x is greater than 1. And I'm going to set that equal to g of x and see if I can solve for x. So here we go. So I'm going to say e x minus 1 minus e to the negative x minus 1, notice I don't have the absolute value brackets here, set that equal to my g function, which is 1 half bracket e x minus 1 plus e. I'm just going to switch that to a negative x plus 1. Well, this is good. So what I could do is I could group these. So you can see here that, well, that's 1 half e to the x minus 1 plus 1 half e to the negative x plus 1. And you can see on this side here, these are like terms. So I can group this with this. So there's a half on this side, one on that side. That's going to give me a half on this side, the left-hand side. And then here you can see, well, that's negative x. That's the same thing as negative x plus 1. And that's a like term with this. So if I bring that over to the other side, it's going to be equivalent to 3 over 2 e to the negative x plus 1. OK, well, the 2's don't matter. I can get rid of the 2's. And also, you'll notice that um, that's sort of like a denominator power. 
what I could do is multiply both sides by e to the negative x, uh, let's say positive x minus 1. So if I multiply through on both sides, well, this is going to become e to the 2x minus 2. So e to the x minus 1 times e to the x minus 1 is e to the x minus 1 squared. And so when you have a power to a power, you multiply your exponents, is equal to 3. Because if I multiply this power by that, it's just going to turn into 1. That means that 2x minus 2 is equal to the ln of 3. And so therefore, x is equal to the ln of 3 plus 2 divided by 2. And I'm going to have to use that as a limit of integration. So I'm going to simplify it further. Um, that's going to be equivalent to 1 half ln 3 plus 1. And the half can be brought up using the power rule. And that's going to be equal to the ln of root 3 plus 1. So that's going to be the point of intersection. That's the x-coordinate where those graphs intersect. OK, so now we have a handle on what the upper and lower functions are. We know where the point of intersection is x-y's for our limit of integration. And I think we're ready to build the integral. So the area, so remember, this one here is our g of x. And this one here is our f of x. And we're paying close attention to this version of f of x um, when we're beyond 1. So the area is given by the integral from 0 to 1. From 0 to 1, I'm interested in the area under the g function, g of x, by dx. Added to that, the story continues from 1 to this point of intersection, from 1 to the ln of root 3 plus 1. And that's where I'm going to subtract the upper function, which is g of x. And I'm going to take away um, f of x dx. OK? So you can see here, I'm going to take g of x, subtract f of x. And for, oh, I'll close my bracket there. And this one here, I'm just curious, from 0 to 1, all I care about is just g of x. So let's plug the equations in. So this is going to be equivalent to, from 0 to 1, g of x is given as this. So 1 half bracket e x minus 1 plus e, I'm going to say negative x plus 1, d of x. So there's my first integral. Plus, well, I'm going to take the difference of g of x and f of x. So the integral g of x is 1 half. I'm just going to repeat this. Bracket e x minus 1 plus e to the negative x plus 1. And then what I have to do is subtract my f of x. So I'm going to take this version of f of x because I'm beyond x is 1. So I'm going to subtract. I'm just going to put it here. So e to the x minus 1 minus e to the negative x minus 1, close bracket, and then close bracket again dx. OK, so there's the construction of the integral. And then the process now is to integrate. So let's go. So I'm going to integrate this. e to x is easy. I'm going to take the half out. And then here, the antiderivative or the integral of e to the x minus 1 uh, is e to the x minus 1. Um, this is a negative. So don't forget the reverse chain rule. That's going to turn that into a negative e to the negative x plus 1, close bracket. And I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 1, from 0 to 1. And then over here on the other side, where a lot of the work is going to be here. Oh, I forgot to put in my limits of integration. So 1, 2, and there it is, the ln root 3 plus 1. So here, uh, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of simplify my integrand here. So integral from 1 to the ln root 3 plus 1. Um, I'm noticing that I can combine some terms. You can see e to the x minus 1 and e to the x minus 1. So there's a minus in front of this e to the x minus 1, meaning that a half minus 1 is negative 1 half e to the x minus 1. Also, too, look, if I bring the negative through here, you can see that these terms are equivalent. So here I've got a half. And here I've got a negative and a negative, which is a positive. So 1 plus a half is 3 over 2. So plus 3 over 2 
e to the negative x plus 1. And uh, I'm just going to put brackets around it and say dx. OK, well, let's do a little bit of um, valuing uh, the first part here. So I can put 1 in first. So that's look how nice that is. 1 minus 1 is 0. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0. So that's going to start out as simply just 0 minus. Now I'm going to put a 0 in. So that's 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So that's going to be e to the negative 1 minus, put a 0 in here. And that's going to be e to the 1, or just e, close bracket. OK, well, that turned out to not to be too bad. And now over here, I'm going to anti-differentiate or integrate these. Um, so I've got a negative, a half. The integral of e to the x minus 1 is e to the x minus 1. Um, here I'm going to pick up a negative because of the inside function, negative. 3 over 2 e to the negative x plus 1. And this is going to be evaluated between ln root 3 plus 1 and 1. OK, we're doing good. OK, so here, uh, if I bring the negative through, that's going to be e minus e to the negative 1. So it's going to give me e minus e to the negative 1 divided by 2. The 2 can stay in the denominator. And then over here, I've got a little bit of play with the ln root 3 plus 1. So that's going to give me negative. First, I'm going to put this in to both and then subtract the 1. OK, so I'm going to have a negative. Maybe I'll keep that plus. Negative 1 half e. Now, if I put ln root 3 plus 1 here, I'm just going to be left with ln root 3. So ln root 3. OK? And then I'm going to place that here as well. So I'm going to say minus 3 over 2 e. Where I see the x, I'm going to put ln root 3 plus 1. Well, that's going to leave negative ln root 3. OK? And then what I want to do is I want to subtract evaluating this expression at 1. Well, this is going to work out well, too, because 1 minus 1 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So that's going to produce a negative 1 half. Same here, look, if that's 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, e to the 0 is 1, minus 3 over 2, close bracket. We're almost there, I promise. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just complete it over here. So let me just erase this. I don't need it anymore. So that's going to be equal to uh, e minus e to the negative 1 over 2. And look here, e to the ln root 3 is just root 3. So that's going to be equal to negative root 3 over 2. And then this one right here, a little extra, it's a negative ln root 3, which could be thought of, the negative can come up here and make that 1 over root 3. OK, so that can be written as negative 3 over 2 root 3. And then here, well, that's negative 1 half minus 3 over 2, which is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And a negative and a negative is a positive, so positive 2. So positive 2. Just double check to make sure I didn't make a mistake. It looks good. It looks good. It looks good. OK. So, oh, it's still looking ugly. Here we go. So equals e minus e to the negative 1 over 2. Well, I could rationalize the denominator. That's root 3 times root 3. And root 3 times root 3 is 3. The 3's cancel, leaving a root 3 over 2. And a negative root 3 over 2 minus root 3 over 2, well, that's just minus root 3. Minus root 3 plus 2. And I think we did it. So there's the answer right there. Don't forget what that, rec that represents. That represents the area between these two curves, f and g, in the first quadrant exclusively, it involves e and a radical and uh, just number two. So there you go. Um, that came from the G advanced exam. I think it was from 2020. And uh, a little bit of practice with our integration today. Anyway, if you like this video, slap a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe. And leave a comment down below as to what videos you guys would like to see. Some of you recommended the G advanced. And I'm happy to do those if you've got special ones that you like, number theory, complex numbers, d differentiation. Just let me know, and I'm happy to put those in future videos. Bye for now.